I get a lot of people asking me how we were blessed to walk away from corporate America in our early 30s. Well, listen, I don't want to keep that a secret. I want to share it with the world. And so maybe you're listening to this podcast and you're trying to figure out how do I even get started on my journey of entrepreneurship and getting to a level of freedom? Well, text the word freedom to 737-777-9909. Enter your information in. And we look forward to sharing some information with you, a proven system with smart overhead, right? That you can do part-time spare time right from the comfort of your home and have amazing mentors, coaches, and a community of entrepreneurs who are willing to support you and help you on your journey to freedom. Welcome to Code Freedom. I'm your host, Eddie Bales. Have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt like there's got to be more to life than the reality that you see every day? Tune in weekly, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays as we crack the codes to freedom in every area of your life. Welcome to Code Freedom. This is Eddie Bales, episode 158, and I'm really excited because we have a special guest, Miss Val Bird, and she is a licensed professional counselor with over 20 plus years of experience providing therapeutic counseling services to men, women, children, couples, and families. Uh, she also has experience in working in acute inpatient, outpatient practices, as well as providing community home-based counseling services. She's currently employed full-time as an EAP counselor, and she works part-time in private practice, live well, consulting, and counseling. Please welcome to the show, Miss Val Bird. All right, well, welcome to Code Freedom. This is Eddie Bales, and I'm so excited for this episode, episode 158. I have a very special guest on the line, uh, and today we have Miss Val Bird. You heard her intro already. Um, but um, I'm excited to have her on the show because mental freedom is, is very important. Um, it, it's a shame for us to look to have financial freedom, but not seek how we can have freedom in our own mind, right? Yes. Uh, we all go through struggles and challenges and things of that nature in life. Uh, some of it, even as a young child, and they carry on into our adulthood, Yes. And sometimes we don't know how to handle those things. So I'm excited to have Val Bird on the line because this is going to be an impactful episode to help people get free in their mind because mm -hmm. we want to have freedom in all areas of our life. So Ms. Val Bird, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And so, you know, let me ask you a question. Um, wh what made you get started into the uh, the mental health arena? Um, I guess years ago, ooh, I don't want to date myself. Um, but I initially started out doing community-based services uh, and while working with uh, clients, my, my specialty area was geriatrics at that time. Um, and so, you know, you can learn a lot from, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot from geriatrics. Um, and so what I found is that people just want you to hear their story, okay? And in hearing their story, that allows them an opportunity to be vulnerable and open up and share what's really going on with them. And so I found that by being um, receptive to wanting to hear their story, taking the time, being sensitive, being genuine, um, those individuals were able to be vulnerable and I was able to gather a lot more information that ended up helping them um, to re receive more services um, with the agency, but also receive the health care that they needed. And so from that standpoint, I decided, I think I want to do counseling. That's awesome. It's got to be really rewarding to to be able to, you know, help somebody get through their ch challenges and stuff like that. I, I mean, that's got to be very rewarding to to be in that position. Right. Yes, yes, yes. I always say, you know, um, it, it helps you to be humble. It helps you to recognize um, that none of us are exempt from life challenges um, and the impacts of, of life challenges. So it is very rewarding. It's rewarding to see um, an individual go from a state of despair to happiness once they discover it's okay to be vulnerable. Wow. And you know, honestly, that's what everybody's looking for is how can I be happy? Um, and, and happiness, you know, obviously it comes from within. It's like mm -hmm. sometimes we say, if I could just get this, or if I could just become this, or if I could just do that, but really yeah. happiness is a state of mind, in my opinion. Um, yeah. 
Yes. I could have bad things going on, but I can still keep my peace and, and remain happy. So, yes, yeah. Your, yeah, I always say it's your choice. Um, you know, a lot of times we like to say, well, this person made me feel this way or this person made me feel that way. Um, but in actuality, our emotions come from our reaction, which is keyword reaction to people, places or things in our environment. What's in our control is our response to those people or those things. So, yeah, you're exactly right. We can determine our happiness. Yeah. You know, I always tell people we, we can there's only two things we can control our attitude and our actions. Like we can mm -hmm. only yes. control how we feel. And, mm -hmm. and, and so that means if somebody says something or does something, we get a chance to decide how yes. we're going to respond, like you said, to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we're going to do after that. Exactly. And that's empowering. If you really think about it, that's empowering because that's saying I'm in control of me. A lot of times we, we will allow situations or individuals um, to have that control right? Because we don't realize what I have control over is how I respond. Wow, that's and that's so even in surviving. That's even in surviving um, a traumatic event or whatever, you know, um, it's what's in your control. What can I do? Wow, that's so good. That's so good. Because, you know, I, I talk to people sometimes and like if I'm, you know, just greeting somebody and they'll say, how you doing? I'm like, I'm incredible. And they're like, really? Yeah. Why are you so incredible? And I, I, I'm thinking to myself, well, really, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm just affirming that I am because I know that um, I'm in control. So I get to set the tone. I get to be the thermometer instead of the thermostat, so to speak. And I get to and control. This, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know. I was just going to say, and there's power in words. So that's good that you're saying that because there's power in words. You uh, know, uh, we have to be mindful of what we speak to ourselves, you know, and none of us are perfect right? None of us are perfect at all. It's just having that self-awareness, right? Of when um, I'm speaking negative to, negative to, negatively, excuse me, to myself, what am I noticing about my emotion and my behavior? Okay. If it's not changing, then I need to take note what's going on. And if it's what I'm feeding myself, I need to turn that around and change it. Right. Wow. That's so good. That's so good. Well, you know, tell us, you know, you kind of did already, but why is it important for us to pay attention to our mental health? And, and I, I do want to just kind of make a reference to, you know, we are we all heard or may, maybe know what happened with, um, you know, Chesley Chris. And, and from the outside looking in, you know, a 2019 winner of the Miss USA, you know, got a lot, a lot of things going on for her in her life. And we can look at the outside looking in and say, oh, look, her life is perfect and great and things like that. But sometimes people are silently struggling inside. So why, just tell us why you think it's important from your experience, like 20 years of experience, um, mm -hmm. that we should really pay attention to our mental health. Well, our mental health is, is just as important as our physical health. You know, um, I always tell individuals that, you know, if your mental isn't right, you know, it can also affect your physical. And if your physical health, you know, your medical health um, isn't well taken care of, then guess what? It affects your, your, your mental, your emotional, all of it goes hand in hand. But it's very important for us um, to be very aware um, of our mental health and not ashamed, you know, um, to, again, my favorite word right now is vulnerable, okay? Um, it's being vulnerable being vulnerable and, and um, acknowledging and accepting how you feel, you know, and that it's okay. It is okay to not be okay, right? None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. Uh, we have good days, we have bad days, you know. Some of those days last a little longer than others, right? Um, but the only person that can change that, remember, is who? Us, you That's know. Um, and so we have, sometimes we have to take inventory. We have to ask ourselves, okay, what is it that I'm needing in this moment? What's going on with me? And what is it that I'm needing in this moment? And how am I providing that for myself? Um, and is it realistic or not? You know, because sometimes it's our own thought processes that we have about ourselves or what we think others have of us. Okay. And that all can play a heavy role on how we feel emotionally um and so being being authentic with ourselves being authentic with ourselves recognizing it and being willing to talk about it 
It's not easy. You know, I always tell people also, you know, figure out who's in your circle and how they meet your needs. So you know that you go to the right person. Okay, to be able to express what you feel so that you can get the help that you need. Um, with mental health, is it has always had a stigma. It has always had a stigma. But I tell everyone, again, mental health is just like physical health. You know, if we deny it, guess what we have? Continued suffering. If we acknowledge it and accept it for what it is and look at the reality of it and say, hey, this is what I'm feeling. You know, do I like it? Do I not like it? And what am I going to do about it? That's healthy. That's healthy for me. Um, and then seeking that help. You know, seeking the help. We right. matter. They matter. You matter. You know? Right. You That's so good. Us. That's so good. Thank you for sharing that. You made me think of something. I like what you said. It's okay to not be okay. Um, mm -hmm. And um, something else you said about your, your, your inner health affects your outer health. Mm -hmm. I think, is that how you said it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it reminded me of a story uh, that I read in Think and Grow Rich. I don't know if you've ever heard this story, but this man is stuck in a freezer mm -hmm. and the freezer is locked. Mm -hmm. um, but the, he, he, he starts to like, you know, panic and he starts to just go crazy and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and eventually he dies. And then the people find him. You've heard this story? I think I have. Okay, okay. Oh, similar to Mm -hmm. The people find him and uh, he, he, you know, he, he dies, um, but the freezer was off the whole time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on, but because he kept like going through these negative thoughts in his head, he, he literally brought on his own demise. And I just mm -hmm. think that's so, so unfortunate. Um, and, 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 and it's just, it's, it's all a mind thing. And I'm sure you have some tools that you give people to, mm -hmm. to help them help them to cope when they're mm -hmm. in these situations where they could be like in a fight or flight situation and they have to like ha learn how to cope with the situation that's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mind is a very powerful, very, very powerful thing. Um, and you're right, if we find ourselves ruminating um, over something too much, you're exactly right. It eventually becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, okay? We're actually responding to it. I always like to use the example, if you ever, um, you find yourself tired and fatigued, right? You keep saying, oh man, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm the something. And you find yourself, the more you say it, the more you feel what? The more you feel fatigued. Um, and so again, a lot of it has to do with being aware. You know, the buzzword is mindfulness, right? Um, but awareness is very important. Um, turning your mind, you know, restructuring your thinking you know, um, to something different, something that's positive and something that's valid and something that's true, you know. Um, it's the best way to, to turn your mind and change the current thought that you have so that what happens also is that you can bring the emotion down. And then you may be better able to process and make a better, a better decision, you know, um, such as the guy in the freezer. You know, if he was able to do that, he may have been able to process a little bit better and figure out, you know, freezer isn't on. But when we get caught in that cycle of thinking, you know, those thoughts affect what we feel and what we feel affects what we do. And so it's just a never ending cycle. And so the more I feel this way, the more I think, the more I respond this way. OK, wow. so it's just a never ending cycle. Wow, that's that. I mean, this is such a valuable um, information that you're sharing. And like you, you mentioned a minute ago about a stigma, a negative stigma. Uh, I find just my, for my own introspection that there's a negative stigma in the minority community a lot mm -hmm. of times around mental health. Um, why do you think that is? I think a lot of it is historical, you know, for us. Um, you know, always been taught to be strong. You know, um, you know, dust yourself off, keep going. You know, um, prayer is important. I'm a very, you know, strong proponent of prayer. Um, but sometimes we will, um, we'll say pray about it. And then let, you, you should be okay, right? Um, but I do believe that, that you know, who, who, whoever you see as your higher power, Okay, um, 
trying to, I want to be selective in what I say here because I don't want to offend anyone. Um, but in our community, the church was very important, right? And so that's what got us through. That's what got us through. You know, the church was like our hospital. That's where we went. Okay. Um, and so there's a strong stigma of one, the picture of what we see mental illness as. You know, a lot of people have the old pictures in their minds of someone that's crazed and, you know, just doing, you know, I don't know what type of things, you know, um, and no one wanting to be around them or uh, wanting to talk with them. So that's one thing. Number two, again, like I said, pray about it and then that's it, you know, but we don't realize that as you see your higher power, he gives everyone a gift and talent, right? Um, and those individuals are there to help guide and direct you to better health. Um, but I think a lot of it just comes from just that, um, that innate feeling that we have of being strong and what strong look like, right? And what weakness look like. And so if you see me here suffering, right? Um, and I don't dust myself off, I don't keep pushing through, then you see me as weak, you know? Um, and so I think that plays a big point, a big part um, in why there's a stigma. And then also, um, we're just very loving and giving people. You know, I always say everyone has an Uncle Jojo or a Grandma Medea or whatever, right? You know, who may have some issues, but we learn to adapt. And we didn't know what those issues actually were until later on when they don't have the inhibitions to manage it or they've gotten, the, the behavior has gotten worse and now it's intolerable for the family. And now you learn actually what's been going on is that this loved one has had a mental illness, you know, so, but we're coming a long way. We're coming yeah. a long way and that's a good thing. And a lot of that again has to do with us just being vulnerable, being vulnerable and saying it's okay to not be okay, you know? There are people out there that are just like me, you know, um, and that have sought help and is doing well. That's good, yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting you said that about, um, like, it's just like health. I mean, it's, mental illness is just like a physical illness, because like if someone and, and about praying because like i'm a big advocate of prayer that's like number mm -hmm. one yes but, yeah. but like we understand if we pray we still can go see a doctor <laughs> yes yes but, but why did that we can we when it comes to the mental health side of things we just got to handle it on our own <laughs> on our own. yeah you know what i mean and and so if, if we're willing to go see a doctor we should be willing to go see a mm -hmm. uh someone that can help us with our our mental health uh, and you know, there's a pastor. She says, "I'm jacked up. You jacked up. All God's people are jacked up." <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. And you know, a lot of I guess a lot of things. As I think more, that probably kept us from mental illness. You didn't see. You know, it wasn't common. Okay. You know, for um, people of color to see a doctor for something of that nature. You usually, you know. It was always portrayed that it was some upper class, you know, individual um, that was not of color, you know, and so it was more normalized. For us, you can't show that weakness. You you never had a chance to take time off to be weak, right? Right, you know, just to be vulnerable, because then you're seen as being weak, and so we keep plowing through those emotions, and all they continue to do is build and build and build. And eventually, guess what? They're manifesting themselves. And they're manifesting themselves in physical ways as well as emotional ways, you know? Maybe um, it's the husband that's drinking all the time, you know? Maybe it's the wife that's, you know, uh, fussing all the time or staying in the bed, you know? It's manifesting itself in subtle ways, but we see it as normal. We're not realizing this person is truly suffering, but they're containing and holding in all that emotional distress they have. And it's just showing up in other ways and it's affecting their family. It's creating a whole nother lifestyle, you know, for the generations to come. 
You know, you know how you hear someone say, oh, well, my family has always done it this way or my dad has always done it this way. Not realizing dad was doing what he needed to do to cope and that wasn't healthy. So now you have another generation that's doing the exact same thing, okay, to cope. And then it becomes a cycle. And we've mm-hmm. talked just, about that uh, yes. a lot on this podcast about changing your paradigms and mm-hmm. things of that nature. So yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so let me just ask maybe one more question. Um, you know, tell us about a time that maybe you've helped somebody and they were able, you were able to see the direct effects of them cu- coming to you and getting some help. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I mean, I know you can't discuss like personal yeah. client stuff, but, but, you know, just give us maybe like a frame of reference of like this person was going through something and because they got help, you were able to kind of guide them in the right direction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that I could think of was an individual that um, really was struggling, struggling with um, getting help. Um, and this was a person of color um, because of the stigma, you know, that made it hard for them. Um, but being able to normalize that it was okay and that I was there to support them, you know. Um, they were able to, to remain in treatment um, and do well and open up eventually, you know, um, and was able to go on for further treatment um, and later found out that they were still doing yeah. pretty good. But this was someone that was um, suicidal, you know, as well and just didn't, they just felt like they didn't have anything else to give, you know, um, and they just felt that it was just in this, this dark place where they were lost. They didn't have help, didn't know what to do. You know, they struggled with the stigma, right? Um, and unfortunately, you know, sometimes some of our ways of getting treatment may not be the way that we need to get the treatment, right? You know how bad things sometimes can happen. We don't like it. However, it's the catalyst to get us to the next level, okay? And sometimes we don't see that until after we've gotten through that point. Maybe we might see it in between, you know. Um, but that was kind of the situation with that individual. You know, it was a situation where they were forced. They, their hands were forced and they didn't have no choice, right? Um, and I must say, I think for them also, and this was something that they said, and this was years, I mean, many, many years ago. Um, I think that what was comforting for them was that they saw somebody of color, you know? Um, And so, you know, it helped. And we talked about their fears and apprehensions and, you know, tried to provide them with the support that they needed, that we were there, that I was there, you know, to support them and not to judge. And that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on is because I want people to know that there is help out there. And you don't have to suffer silently and secretly. You can go and seek the help that you need and, and, and you can find somebody who can help coach you through whatever situations you're going through. So I really appreciate having you on this, uh, this episode. And um, look, how can people connect with you? We want people to uh, you know, get with you and, and, and maybe, uh, maybe they need some help. And how can people connect with you? Uh, they can connect with me by contacting me uh, on my email. Um, or by phone. My email is Val Smith hyphen bird, B Y R D, at livewell consulting hyphen counseling.com or call me at 864 810 0323. And they can reach right. me here. Thank you. And, and I'll put that in the show notes too. So if somebody can go to the show notes and they can see that. So thank you so much for being on this episode of Code Freedom. Uh, I know people, a lot of people are going to be free from the mind after listening to this episode and we're going to help a lot of people. So thank you so much for being on. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, have a great day. Okay. You too. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys for listening. Um, Definitely feel free to take a screenshot of this episode. Tag me in it on Instagram uh, or Facebook or wherever you find me on social media. I would love to give you a shout out. Hey, you might even get a prize. Who knows? But uh, excited that you had a chance to take a listen. I hope you got a lot of value. And uh, definitely feel free to uh, 
Give us five stars as well as a review. Uh, Show us some love and we appreciate you. God bless you all and see you all over the top.